Hello, my name is glitchwitch.jpg, but we're all friends here. You can just call me glitchwitch. You can drop the JPEG. But if you're a JPEG lover like myself, you can keep it. Anyway, I like to talk about internet horror. That's my thing. That's what I like to do. Sometimes I dabble in other things like survival horror games and spooky movies. But at my core, I'm an internet horror girly. It is my passion. And if you look at my channel, I mostly have talked about more modern examples of internet horror specifically. I love me some analog and digital horror. I've covered series like Mandala Catalog and The Oldest View and Angel Hair, things like that. I, I put analog horror characters into a drag race simulator. That's fun, go watch that. If you wanna have a good time, I think it's quite fun, but perhaps I'm biased. Sometimes I have to travel back in time because the internet, she's not brand new. She's not old either. When I say travel back in time, I'm talking a decade, two decades max. Obviously we can't go that far, but as long as there's been internet, there has been horror on the internet. So today we're gonna travel back in time a little bit. And I think to the oldest that I have personally covered on this channel, I did do one creepypasta video in the past about um, 12 minutes. The creepypasta 12 minutes, the length is not 12 minutes. God forbid I'm capable of putting a 12 minute video out, I talk way too long. But that's probably the oldest I've been, I can't remember off the top of my head how old that creepypasta is, but I think what we're talking about today is older. And uh, we're gonna loop back to the year 2006. And we're gonna visit a certain young woman she is 17 years old. She is very similar to you. And did I mention, she's dead. <sighs> if you're anything like me, hearing the name Carmen Winstead immediately brings to mind the maybe most iconic text-to-speech audio ever put to the internet. Let me play it for you in its entirety. Unless I get copyright stricken, I don't know if that's possible, but we'll see. If it gets copyright stricken, I will read it aloud myself. Hi, my name is Carmen Winstead. I'm 17 years old. I am very similar to you. Did I mention to you that I'm dead? A few years ago, a group of girls pushed me down a sewer hole to try and embarrass me. When I didn't come back up, the police came. The girls said that I had fell and everyone believed them. The police found my body in the sewer. I had a broken neck and my face was torn off. Send this message to 15 people after you listen the whole message if you value your life. A boy called David received this message. He just laughed and deleted it. When he was in the shower, he heard laughing. My laughter. He got really scared, rushed to his phone to repost this message. But he was too late. The next morning, his mom entered his bedroom and all she found was a message written in his blood saying, You will never have him back. No one has found his body yet because he is with me. A girl called Charlotte received this message and she immediately sent it to 25 people, 10 more than required. I still watch over every second of her life to make sure that she is safe and to keep her and everyone close to her out of danger. Send this to 15 people in the next five minutes if you don't want your fate to be the same as David's. Your time starts now. The story is true, you can research it on Google. I, I, I don't even know where to begin. So, uh, that scared the hell out of my cats. They didn't like it. So, that is an audio recording, dare I say the audio recording, of a popular chain message from the aforementioned Miss Carmen Winstead. I, before I get into Carmen and her backstory, I mean, she just told you her backstory, so I don't really need to get that much into it, clearly. She said it all. There's too many things I love about this. For Like, I could make a whole video just about this audio message, which is what I thought I was going to do, but there's more. There's so much more. It's funny. It's so funny. 
Like, it is... <laughs> I don't know if it was made intentionally to be funny, or if it was seriously spread around like this. Obviously, I know it was spread around like... Are y'all beefing? I know it was spread around like emails, text messages, the like. The delivery of the text-to-speech, which I know sounds silly, but it's genius. In my house, hello, my name is Carmen Winstead, I am 17 years old, I am very similar to you, is, is a go-to phrase. I say that so frequently. My husband and I about lost it when we were going through... Yes? Children. My husband and I, when we were going through our initial drag race binge, a certain Crystal Method appeared and we loved her. We lo I love Crystal Method. I love her. She's wonderful. We were like, well, who does her voice sound like? Why does her voice sound so familiar? And then we realized she sounds like the Carmen Winstead text to speech. Hello world, I'm Crystal Method. I'm 28 years old from Springfield, Missouri. That scene in High School Musical 1 where his nipple showed is what turned me gay. So now every time I see Crystal Method, I'm quoting Carmen Winstead. I hope someday she does a number to the Carmen Winstead audio. That would be a dream come true for me, specifically for me. Anyway, I digress. It's funny as hell. And you know what? I hadn't listened to this full audio uh, in a long time before researching for this video. And I have to say, after I am very similar to you, the funniest part of this entire thing is when she says, I have to read it on my computer so I get it verbatim. This story is true. You can research it on Google. That is so funny. The thought of a ghost telling you, look it up on Google the way that like billboard lawyers, their only thing on the billboard is like five stars Google or look me up on Google. That's so peak internet ghost like Carmen belongs to the internet I just I love it I love it I think it's genius I kind of thought I was just gonna make a little video about the audio message and like the spread of the chain message because that's all I thought there was and when I went to start researching this I realized she began as a fully written creepypasta. Now there is some contention online between whether she is a creepypasta or an urban legend. I'm gonna go ahead and call her a creepypasta. You can die mad or fight me in the comments, but because we are focusing on her origins on the internet, I'm gonna consider her a creepypasta. I do think her transition from creepypasta to chainmail makes her an urban legend, but when I'm talking about the written story, I'm gonna refer to it as creepypasta because it serves my motives and I'm a selfish person. And you know what? This is my video, not yours. So you can make your own Carmen Winstead urban legend truther video. I'm not gonna stop you. In fact, I'll, I'll like and subscribe. So, meh. I scanned the creepypasta a little bit when I was researching this, but I kind of wanted to read it blindly. Like I, I very much already have a formulated opinion on it and, and, and its impact on the culture, but I wanted to fully read it right here with y'all. Without further ado, here is Carmen Winstead. They pushed her. Carmen Winstead was 17 years old when her parents decided to move to Indiana. Her father had lost his job and the only way he could find new it This is already happening. This is gonna happen a lot where I'm gonna have to pause because I read it correctly when it was written incorrectly. Also sidebar, I'm so sorry to her that she had to move from to the Midwest. I don't know where she's moving from. I grew up in the Midwest and let's just say I'm happy I'm not in the Midwest anymore. I'm gonna start over. Carmen Winstead was 17 years old when her parents decided to move to Indiana. Her father had lost his job, and the only way he could find a new employment was by moving to a new state. The relocation caused a lot of problems for Carmen. She had to leave her friends behind and attend a whole new school in Indiana. There and then, Carmen decided that she couldn't take the bullying any longer. She planned to stay behind that evening after school and tell her teacher what had been happening. 
Unfortunately, her decision came too late to save her life. They pushed her and she tripped over and fell head first down the manhole. When they saw her falling, the girls started giggling and when Carmen's name was called out, they shouted, she's down in the sewer. All of the other students began laughing. When the teachers looked down the manhole and saw Carmen's body lying at the bottom in the muck and the poop, the laugh. <laughs> you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. You're serious, you're a serious YouTuber, you're a serious content creator. But when the teachers looked down the manhole and saw Carmen's body lying at the bottom in the muck and the poop, the laughter abruptly stopped. Her head was twisted around at an odd angle and her face was covered in blood. Worse still, she wasn't moving. There was nothing any of the teachers could do for her. Carmen was dead. When the police arrived and went down into the sewer, they determined that she had broken her neck. Her face had been torn off when she hit the ladder, L-A-T-T-E-R, on the way down and her neck snapped when she landed on her head on the concrete at the bottom. The police hauled Carmen's body out of the sewer and sent her to the mortuary. Everyone had to stay behind after school when the police questioned all of Carmen's classmates. The five girls lied to the police, saying they had witnessed Carmen falling down the sewer. The police believed the girls and Carmen Winstead's death was ruled an accident and the case was closed. Months later, Carmen's classmates began receiving strange emails on their MySpaces. The emails were titled, They Pushed Her, and claimed that Carmen hadn't really fallen down the sewer. She had been pushed. The emails also warned that the guilty people should own up and take responsibility for their crime. If they didn't, there would be horrible consequences. Most people dismissed the emails as a hoax, but others were not so sure. A few days later, one of the girls who pushed Carmen down the sewer was at home taking a shower when she heard a strange cackling laugh. It seemed to be coming from the drain. The girl started to freak out and ran out of the bathroom. That night, the girl said goodnight to her mom and went to sleep. Five hours later, her mom was awoken in the middle of the night by a loud noise that resounded throughout the house. She ran into the daughter's room, only to find it empty. There was no trace of the girl. The worried mother called the police, and when they arrived, they conducted a search of the area. Eventually, they discovered the girl's grisly remains. Her corpse was lying in the sewer, covered in muck and poop. Her neck was broken and her face was missing. It had been completely torn off. One by one, all of the girls who pushed Carmen that day were found dead. They had all been killed in exactly the same way and were all found exactly in the same spot, in the sewer at the bottom of the same uncovered manhole where Carmen had met her doom. But the killing didn't stop there. More and more of Carmen's former classmates were found dead. It seemed that anyone who didn't believe that Carmen had been pushed was eventually found down in the sewer with their necks broken and their faces torn off. They say that Gar... They say that Carmen's ghost is still on the rampage, hunting down anyone who doesn't believe her story. According to the legend, Carmen will get you, whether it is from a shower, a sink, or a drain. When you go to sleep, you'll wake up in the sewer in complete darkness, paralyzed, unable to move, hearing cackling laughter all around you. Then, as you scream in horror, Carmen will come and tear your face off. So be careful who you bully, because you might find yourself on the receiving end of the curse of Carmen Winstead. Okay, a journey, an experience, a moment perhaps. Sure, not the most groundbreaking piece of writing ever committed to to the to the the paper, I don't think to the to the word, to the Microsoft Word 2006. But I will say when your point of reference is just the audio like me, this this is wonderful. <laughs> It's only uphill from the audio. Um, is it a MySpace era carry AU? Yes, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. This clearly was written by a young person. Obviously, as most creepypasta was, or at least most creepypasta like this. And yes, it is cringe. Yes, it is silly. Yes, there are grammatical errors. But you can tell that there is a genuine emotional uh, motivator to this story. The author of this story was 14 when she wrote it and she was being bullied. So this was kind of an emotional outlet for her 
and I think creating Carmen Winstead allowed her to feel probably a sense of retribution against bullies. It's not acting out physical violence against bullies, but it is putting out into the world that there is bad karma for people who bully people. And you know what? There should be bad karma for people who bully people. So if Carmen Winstead is nothing but that, metaphorical bad karma against bullies, we have to stand. The author that wrote this has been asked that she not be associated with this anymore because she is a fully grown woman now and she views it as a little cringe and a little embarrassing but she has said go ahead use the character i don't care you know classic urban legend creepypasta fair the character is is beyond the author i'm just gonna refer to the author as jay because she does not want to be associated with it but basically my cat won't shut the f up Basically, really all you need to know, a, four, a real real 14 year old girl wrote this in 2006. So, it explains everything. I think the thing to me that's most fascinating about all of this, this was not written to be a chain message. Jay's intention was never for it to be a chain message. It was just like a vent piece. I'm not even sure where it first appeared. I think it may have appeared on MySpace originally, so I think that's why it's fuzzy as to why it is considered a creepypasta or a religion, whatever. Regardless, the intention was not for it to be a chain message. I think that's interesting because it was, you know, the, the evolution of it becoming a chain message makes sense because in story, uh, the girls who killed Carmen you know, get this warning in the, the form of the MySpace emails, which I'm gonna say it right now. I'm too young for MySpace. I don't know what, what is a, I, what is a MySpace email? <laughs> is it like a Facebook message? Is it a, a, like a, a, an email outside of MySpace, an email within MySpace? I don't know. Should I have researched it beforehand? Probably, but my mind was still blown that Carmen Winstead exists in parallel universes. <laughs> I think this evolution of Carmen into a chain message, which did happen about like a year or two after the original story was, was published and was not done by Jay, it was done by other forces. Cause again, it just kind of makes sense. Like it's a natural evolution. I do think that's what pushes her into urban legend territory because she kind of left the internet because there could be people getting this chain message that don't know what a creepypasta is, aren't familiar with all of this. that you know, she does kind of live on in this other realm. I mean, regardless, she is being sent electronically, whether it's through a text message or an email, but you know, my grandma gets emails. She doesn't know what a creepypasta is. There are two, there are many internets. There are many internets out there. Even though the chain message is like so dumb to us now, there was a point in time where this made 12 year old their pants. The internet is full of comments of people being like, oh, I believed this with my full chest when I was 11 years old and I didn't sleep for three weeks. That's the chain message, baby. It's me and the f Jeff the Killer image. I hate it. I hate him. Still. I'm nearing 30 every minute and I still hate it. And you know what? He's everywhere now because we're trying to find the source of the image. And you know, I, I want to know. I want to know because then maybe I'll sleep at night. Okay, anyway, yes, Carmen Wynn said it's scary to people. She she did have that power over people, similarly to how other creepypastas went on to have that power for people like my good boy Jeffy and uh, even Slenderman and stuff like that. But I think that compared to your Smile Dogs, your Jeff the Killers, your Slendermans, Carmen's tale is a lot more grounded and I think that's because she's like protopasta she's just a lot more real it's very base level urban legend stuff of a vengeful ghost carmen is a character that i think a lot of young girls probably could have related to and found comfort in and again, I think the creation of her is this like vengeful spirit that will take down bullies uh, probably gave some weird sort of comfort 
to bullied kids. And again, I was like eight <laughs> when this came out originally. So I'm just hy hypotheticals here. I'm, I can't speak for actual 13 year olds reading Carmen Winstead, they pushed her in the year of our Lord 2006. But this is just my assumption. I think it's a very easy story to put yourself into the same way that I read Carrie when I was in middle school and I was, you know, a chubbier girl that got my period too early. So I, you know, I love my girl Carrie. I know she got her period too late, but you're on either side of the spectrum of period. <laughs> I'm talking about periods too much. Anyway, you relate to these characters. I don't want to kill, I didn't want to kill my whole middle school at the school dance, but it felt good to read about Carrie doing it to her school. And I think that Carmen Winstead probably gave that outlet a healthy outlet to bully kids. That to me is what creepypasta was supposed to be. And really what it was is it was this healthy outlet for troubled and kind of weird kids to, to be creative and get their big feelings out because you have a lot of big feelings when you are a tween and a young teen. And I think creepypasta was a way for kids to, to just get it out there. And it was a community and just, you know, it's a big moment, big, big moment in time, the creepypasta. However, that opinion has of course been forever changed because I don't know if you've heard about this, if you've clicked on a, a YouTube video for a girl who has under a hundred subscribers talking about Carmen Winstead, don't know if you've heard about the little 2014 Slenderman incident, uh, but I'll educate you if you don't know. In 2014, there were two 12 year old girls who uh, they attempted to kill their friend because they claimed Slender Man told them to do it. Luckily the victim, she survived. She's a little badass. She crawled out to the road and was found by a guy riding his bike, full recovery. She's fine, thank God. <laughs> but of course, instead of the news cycle and parents uh, seeing that there's a clear mental health crisis in this country among young people. Instead, they blamed the evil internet stories that were corrupting the children because it had to be Slenderman's fault and not undiagnosed mental illness that nobody wants to believe in. All of a sudden, creepypastas were bad. Your kids shouldn't do creepypasta. Your kids shouldn't write creepypasta. And you know what? I do agree. We should monitor children's internet usage. That's something we should do as, as parents. I'm not a parent, I don't know why I said we. That's something parents should do. And that's something that I think my generation suffered greatly from. I'm a little lucky that we didn't have reliable internet until I was like in high school. So, you know, I've talked about it before. I thought Squidward was real when I was 16. So there's pros and cons, but also I didn't see the headings on Lively. Like so many of my peers. So I, I do think one of the messages of that whole situation is we should monitor the children's internet usage, but you should be aware of the actual root cause of your kids' problems. Are they getting bullied? Do they have an undiagnosed mental illness? Do you just refuse to talk to them about their problems? Because while a child's problem may not seem big to you, it is big to them. And it is a parent's duty to confront their children about their big emotions and their big problems. It may seem trivial to you, but to them, that's their whole world. So again, I don't know why this is turning into a parenting lesson. That was not my intention. I am a childless millennial. Regardless, what I'm trying to say is Carmen Winstead to me is a prime example of what the creepypasta strove to be, strived because it's proof that it can be used as a healthy outlet. The author of this story, she got all her big feelings and her big emotions out into this now iconic piece of literature. And she grew up and she's a whole grown adult and she's like, oh God, I don't wanna think about that cringe thing I wrote about when I was a kid because she was able to grow and move on. This is pure, this is innocent. And it provided 
an outlet. And that was what was so beautiful to me about the creepypasta. I think Carmen Winstead is two different people. Carmen Winstead, there is a Carmen Winstead multiverse. And in one, we have this Carmen, the full story, the vengeful spirit wronged by her bullies, forgotten. Her goal is just to be remembered for what happened to her. She had to live in Indiana of all places, my God, ugh. And then the Carmen Winston from the audio, it's a relic of a forgotten era of horror, the chain message. It's dumb, it's ridiculous, it lives on as a meme, but she's very different to me than the sweet sensitive Carmen from the written story. I can't say that the written creepypasta they pushed her is the most compelling portrait of childhood bullying. It's not, but I have to appreciate it for what it is. And it's a, it's a snapshot in time. <sighs> the audio, the chain message, it's aged like milk, thank God. It's one of the best examples of just pure, ridiculous, just oh, everything about it is perfect. And, you know, even though I have a, now a newfound respect for Carmen and her tale of being pushed, I will never stop quoting that audio clip. I'm not capable of stopping quoting that audio clip. So, on that note, goodbye. My name is Glitchwitch. I'm in my late 20s, and I am very similar to you.